I decided to take the long way to the office for two reasons. A, because it's actually pretty nice outside. It's sunny, it's not too cold, it's pretty good. And then B, I got this guy. It's called the Insta360 ONE X. It's a 360 camera and I just wanted to test it out. So probably the intro clip for this video was uh, shot on this guy. So Christmas is approaching and with that come all the, the fun days uh, like Black Friday, all those sales and all that stuff. And uh, for me, that kind of just automatically puts my mind focusing on gear. And, and the question that I ask myself all the time is, which piece of gear do I actually need and which piece of gear do I need next? So kind of like the priority of what gear to get. And filmmaking, we all know, is crazy expensive. It's really expensive, so you don't want to buy those things that um, you don't end up using really. You and I both know we've, we've done this before. You buy something, you think you really need it, and then uh, it just sits on your shelf and you haven't used it for like a month. And if I had to recommend, uh, let's just say hypothetically, what gear you should be buying, I don't really like telling you guys what to buy because it's your money and I really feel like you need to do the research instead of me just telling you what you should buy. But if I had to tell you in kind of order of priority what kind of filmmaking gear you need to be a filmmaker, um, the list would probably go something like this, hypothetically. All right, so first up on the list is obviously a camera. You need a camera and you could film with something like your, your smartphone, your iPhone, Android, whatever, but I always recommend to get at least uh, like a dedicated camera that's meant for photography filmmaking because it's, it's built for that. And more specifically, something with interchangeable lenses. I think that's really key. So like, you know, you could go for a Sony, you could go for Canon, there's, Panasonic, there's so many different choices and none of them are wrong. I would just say get something with an interchangeable lens. Um, I think the best bang for buck cameras right now are probably the Sony a7 III and probably still the GH5. If you don't have to film yourself, if you don't need autofocus, GH5 is a great camera. And if you can't afford those, uh, just get something with interchangeable lenses, like an M50 or something, I don't know. Uh, but right now I'm using the EOS R and then I, I still really like the Canon 1DX2 and the Sony a7 III, great cameras. Number two, you definitely need a lens and um, there's a lot to choose from. I just did two videos on zooms versus primes, so I talked a lot about lenses. You can watch those videos, but but I would say go for this guy, the Sigma 1835 F1.8, if you're not using a full frame camera. If you are using a full frame camera, if you can afford this guy that I'm using right now, the 16 to 35, or then just go for like a kit lens and like a nifty 50 or something like that. But uh, you need to invest in lenses. Lenses are a great investment. A lot of these lenses I've had for a really long time. They still work perfectly fine and I could still sell them for about as much as I bought them for. Next, you're gonna need a memory card. And um, I would say go for a more legit brand like Lexar or SanDisk or one of these like well-known companies, uh, try not to go for knockoffs because there is nothing worse than a corrupted memory card. And yeah, just because it's the legit company doesn't mean that it's never gonna corrupt. But um, I would say uh, just, you know, don't chintz out on the memory cards. And also, these are these are great for protecting them. They're, they're waterproof Pelican little cases. So uh, even if you drop your camera bag in the water, your memory cards are still good. You need a memory card. Next, I would recommend getting some sort of stabilizer for your camera, whether it's a grill pod, probably not this one because this one is really cheap and crappy, um, or a monopod, a tripod, something to stabilize your camera. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Make it simple, but uh, don't go too cheap on it, but something to cut out all that gross shake. A stabilizer. But not a gimbal or a glide cam yet. That'll come later. You don't need that yet. Not yet. Before you get a gimbal, I think you need two things. First off, you need a microphone, at least some sort of microphone. And I usually recommend getting something like this, the Didi or the Rode VideoMic Pro that I'm using right now. Um, but you could also get a lav mic if you're always just filming other people, kind of sitting down, corporate videos, that kind of stuff, interviews, uh, a lav mic is great. And then the second thing you need before you get a gimbal is a ND filter. You need an ND filter. And this is one of those things that doesn't seem like you really, really need one. And it costs like $200, I think some of them are $300. 
They're kind of expensive, but it's so crucial to have an ND filter because then you can film at wider apertures outside and not have to crank your shutter speed super high, which just ruins the look of your video. So yeah, you need an ND filter, but don't worry, you don't need to get one for every single lens that you have, you just use these things. I've said this before, it's a pro tip. You just use these little step up rings. So you just buy the biggest ND filter. So this is an 82. And then you use a whole bunch of these step rings to use it on different lenses. So if it's a, a smaller front, you just use one of these little adapters. And these only cost like $20 or something like that. So instead of buying a whole bunch of $200, $300 filters, just buy like these little adapters, which cost like 20 bucks. I'll link them down below. Once you got all that stuff, then I think you're starting to get ready to look at gimbals, a moving stabilizer. So a stabilizer that helps you get moving shots. Um, yeah, and I think here there's two clear winners. One is the Glidecam um, XR2000. This is the one that I would go for. I think they might've actually renamed it the XR Pro. Um, this guy cost me $200. I bought it used because just mechanical parts, as long as there's nothing visibly broken on it, it's great. So super cheap, or you go with a gimbal, and these guys are gonna be a little bit more expensive, um, but I would recommend the DJI Ronin S right now. This is my favorite little gimbal. Um, so yeah, if you're ready for a gimbal, you have all that other stuff, uh, check out this one, or just get a glide cam. If you're like me, you've probably survived up till this point with just, you know, putting your camera gear in whatever bag you have but you should probably look into a camera bag. And my favorite right now uh, is this guy, the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450 AW. This one's the Mark II version two. I had the Mark I for a while, but I just got this one. And I'm really liking this one. It's a really nice bag. Fits a lot of stuff. It's mostly empty right now, but I also like that you can buy these little bags and then I can kind of, you know, depending on what type of shoot it is, I can take a different version of that bag. I have one for my drone, I have one for filters and adapters and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, look into a bag. And then we're getting into the really fun stuff, drones. Everybody needs a drone. And uh, if you don't have a drone yet, and you're up to this point in your kind of camera gear gathering, buying process, I highly recommend getting the Mavic Air. DJI makes a lot of great drones, but I've really enjoyed the Mavic Air. It's so small, easy to carry around, and the image is actually decent. It's not quite as good at flying as some of the other DJI drones, but it's a great drone for a great price. Um, I would recommend getting this one if you don't have a drone yet. And then you need some light. Now, the reason why I didn't mention lights before, even though lights are crazy important, is that lights are fairly easy to rent. So you don't really need lights. They're, they're pretty cheap to rent. But once you're at this point, I do recommend that you get at least one light, at least one light. And if you only had enough budget to buy one light, I'd definitely buy this one. It's the Aperture 120D Mark II, and then I would get this softbox, the light dome. With this combination, you can do a lot. I light with this source of light for like so many different types of videos. This is the light that I would get if I were you and you didn't have any lights yet. And now we're getting to a point where you kind of have everything. Yeah, you could buy more lenses or microphones or, or filters or whatever. There's a bunch of different stuff that you could buy. But then there's this whole category of these like little things that you kind of have to buy once you need them. There is no like uh, really like order or priority for these things. Um, there will come a time where you just need it and that's kind of when you're gonna have to buy it. For example, gaff tape, car mount, articulating arm, monitor, GoPro, cage for your camera, C-stand, or a 360 camera. A 360 camera is really great, but it's not one of those things that you're gonna need right away. It's kind of a specialty item, unless you're specifically focusing on 360 video. Um, you're not gonna need it most of the time. I've never, ever, ever had a client ask me for 360 video. Now that will change, but as of right now, this is kind of like a bonus item. It's really fun to use, it's really cool. It's a great way to get these really cool hyperlapse bullet time thingies, but it's not a necessity. Um, so yeah, make sure you're kind of prioritizing what you actually need and what you should buy next. 
It's not always the most fun thing that you need to buy next. And that's why you shouldn't look at kind of what's flashy because then you're just gonna go for the gimbals and the drones even though you actually need things like microphones and filters before you get those things. So hypothetically, if I had to help you buy your next piece of gear, um, this would kind of be the list that I would go by. Hypothetically, hypothetically, do your own research. Do your own research, I'm telling you. Lunchtime with my best pals. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Cold. Remember that time we used to share an office? No, I don't come to the office anymore. I haven't seen Peter in like, it feels like a week and a half, week and a half at least. Yeah, I'm a bit of a hermit when the winter comes. I just like working at home. I don't know, coffee, sweatpants. Yes, please. Yes, please. Peter, have you ever bought something that you totally regret or you didn't use? Oh, all the time. <laughs> uh, camera bags is a big one for me. I bought so many camera bags that I've used for like a day. They're brand new, they're just in the basement like organization and then something about it bugs me and then I buy a different one and it's, just, it's a bit of an issue. It's been an issue my whole life. I definitely know that problem if you remember my uh, bags video a little while ago. I have a few of those. But I think the biggest mistake buy that I made was the Mov Movi M10. I bought it and I was like, oh, I'll use this for my DP gigs and I, I never used it. I made zero dollars from that gimbal. So. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was that was probably my biggest fail of a of a purchase. That's not just a small like little back little backpack fail. That's like a full size before gimbals were available fail. To to be fair, I bought it when it was a crazy sale. They started at 15 grand. I bought it for three. So uh, I wasn't That's feeling. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of money. But then I sold it years later for. I think like 1500 or something like that. So I, I still made most of my money back. That's most of it. I don't know where I'm going, Peter. Oh, uh, reverse, reverse. All that to say, do your research and don't buy gear that you're not really gonna need. So uh, hypothetically, follow my list, hypothetically, hypothetically. Not actually that cold, I was just doing it for like, just in case it looked good on video. I don't I really don't, not cold at all. It's quite mild out, actually. This is what I was talking about, that vlog life. It's not fully real, but it's it's the closest thing to real. Real enough. <laughs> it's, it's close enough to real. Give us a break. We just went by a school and uh, the kids saw us on our one wheels and I, I assume they saw my camera. Right away they yell, YouTubers! <laughs> Apparently we are the official symbol of uh, YouTubers now. Good times.